Chapter 3 focuses in on the importance of listening as it pertains to customer service, and it's kind of one that falls into the, the no-duh category of, of things to do. You know, it makes sense whether it be in customer service or in our own personal interactions with, with colleagues, friends, family members, etc., that listening is important. But the funny thing is about listening is that while we are taught in school um, reading, writing, and arithmetic, we aren't taught much about how to listen, yet listening is what we do more than anything else in communication. And like anything else in communication, listening can be done wrong and it can be done right. So chapter three helps give some tips for a way to make sure that listening is done right within customer service interactions. Uh, it's something uh, we have to have our ears on all the time in uh, in customer service when we're dealing when we're dealing with customers and it's important to differentiate between hearing our customers and listening to our customers and with with hearing you are, you are you're cognizant of the fact that there there are words coming out of the the customer's mouth and you're kind of taking it in but listening is taking it a step further listening is really paying attention to what the customer is saying listening for um, little hidden messages the way that they're saying it processing that information and using it in a way to interact back with the customers. So there is a difference between hearing and listening and of course this pertains to much more than just uh, just customer service. Uh, so the book talks about the three different categories, three different ways that listening can be impacted starting with um, with internal elements, uh, talking about environmental elements which are those um, elements that kind of exist in the environment outside of our head, <laughs> which can be uh, external noises, uh, gatekeepers, anything that could distract us from being effective listeners. And then the third one being interactional elements, which break down into two different categories, um, self-centered and self-protection. And spend some time paying attention to this, this part in, in, in the book. There's probably some... Uh, definitely some new thoughts there that you might not have uh, thought of before as as it pertains to the um, to the importance of listening and really what it uh, sheds some light on is why listening can be so challenging because there are so many different factors out there that can and can and, and do have an impact on on how we listen the rest of the chapter talks about the different action tips for how to be um, an effective listener and what are some of the habits to avoid. Um, so starting off with with one that's kind of rather simple one is to stop talking. You can't be a good listener if you are running your mouth at the same time. So the importance of, of silence plays a big role in in listening. Um, preparing to listen, kind of put yourself in the in, in the mindset, you know, really concentrate on the fact as you begin the interaction with the customer that you are going to focus on them listen to what they have uh, have to say. Um, avoiding faking attention and being the uh, the wide awake listener. I think we have a tendency to do this in personal relationships, perhaps in conversations that we wish weren't taking place, that we will do what we can to fake attention with the ever popular aha uh -huh and you know nodding our head um, when in fact while the conversation is is taking place we're thinking about the football game that we want to watch later that weekend. So avoid faking attention. Being patient, understand that um, customers are in any interaction that you know people have different speaking styles. Sometimes they take a while to get to the point. Um, sometimes they're not really being clear in what it is they're saying. So you know we'll have a tendency, those of us who tend to fall into the I just want to get to fix category, uh, you got to be patient. You know, listen to the customer all 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 the way through. Um, listen for more than than just the facts. You know, paying attention to how the customer, their their tone of voice, their nonverbal cues. Um, the message is is just one thing, but the way that they're delivering the message is also a big part of it. Um, the idea again of stopping talking by biting your tongue and not interrupting, again, you know, with the importance of, of being patient. Sometimes we want to jump in and you know finish sentences or ask another question. Um, you know, you want to try to uh, while the customer is talking, you know, don't interrupt. Wait for that break, and then there's an opportunity to um, to jump in and, and ask questions. We'll talk about it in, in, in just a minute. Uh, reinforce 
um, what the, the customer is saying. Show that you're listening by positive verbal and nonverbal cues. Like I said before in the example of being uh, the, to avoid faking attention, you know, there are ways that we can tell when we're having a conversation with someone that they are truly listening, and that goes to the nonverbal, the, the nods of the head, facial expressions that, you know, the saying, aha, uh -huh, or I see, I, I see what you're saying, but it, it has to be sincere, not just something you're trying to do. It has to be something that you are actually doing, that these are honest and genuine responses to what the customer is, is saying. Um, solicit, you know, uh, clarification. If you're not sure what the, what the customer is saying that by the time they're done talking, ask them to repeat back um, certain points or um, just simply a asking questions, asking open-ended questions. That is ones that can be responded to with more than just a yes or a no so that you're truly getting an understanding what it is the customer is, is, trying, to, is trying to say. Minimize gatekeepers. Um, you know, the best way to find out what someone is trying to say is to talk to them directly. So if you're in a managerial position and a customer has a complaint, don't let that complaint travel to you by way of the frontline employee. You as a manager should be the one who is talking one-on-one -on -one, uh, with that customer. Otherwise, there's, there's a barrier in the listening process. It's you're listening to what someone else is saying based upon what they were told. And it's like that old game of telephone. The, by the time the message gets to the, um, to the intended receiver, a lot of times it, ha it bears no resemblance to what the original message was. So get out there, get out from you know, behind your desk. Don't be afraid to talk to your customers. Uh, then the next one is trying uh, counter attitudinal, attitudinal advocacy, which is a mouthful, which is why we'll just call it CAD, um, C-A-D. And this is kind of very similar to the uh, to the clarification where you're repeating back to the customer what it is they've said just to make sure that there is truly understanding. And then the last one is is taking notes. If you're on the, uh, this is a great one for telephone con telephone conversations, which a later chapter we'll talk about how to use good telephone skills. Um, touching upon that one for just a second, as far as listening skills as it pertains to being on the on the telephone, I think in this day and age we're always trying to multitask. It's easy for us when we're, we're in a tele, when we're in a telephone conversation with someone to perhaps become distracted by things around us. A big one for me that I have to watch out for is I'll be on the phone with someone and I'll open up my computer and send an email message at the same time. The person on the other end who is hearing that typing, do they think that I I am truly listening to them? Well, even even though I am, but they hear that. The, the keyboard in the background and think, well, you know, I don't have much time for this. So um, anyway, but taking notes when you're, um, when you're on the telephone, um, those little notes can help, um, you know, kind of remind you the key points that the customer is, is, is trying to say. So um, all these little, I think all these little action tips and uh, recommendations that uh, the author recommends are, are really good ones to help to help people become better trained and better aware of the importance of listening as it pertains not just to customer service but in day-to-day um, in -day life as well. So that's the mini lecture, lecture on chapter three. Um, we'll see you in the next chapter for chapter four. Good luck with the quiz.